Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience, from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you live a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now, and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hey, hey, wildly ambitious leaders. Alex Leanne is with her baby today, so she is not on this interview with us, but man, can I just tell you, sometimes you get the rarest opportunities, and I really believe in my heart of hearts that this is one of those times. Um, We are having Leah Valencia Key and you know, we talk about the neuroscience work. We talk about unleashing your power, becoming unstoppable, living your best and fullest life. And this beautiful soul can show us the evidence of exactly how to do that. And how exciting is that? I'm so pumped to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I got chills just (laughs) hearing every word you said. That's unleashing all that is you, um, walking into all of your destiny and just living fully is um, everything that I quest to be in the world. So I'm honored to be here with all of you. (laughs) Thank you. I'm I'm so grateful. And I want to tell you, this beautiful soul went from homeless to over a hundred million homes. That's how she describes it. She was raised in very humble beginnings, as she says, in a super impoverished neighborhood of Philadelphia. Leah Valencia Key was living in a homeless shelter with her mother, sister, and brother. And even in such dark times, her mom would tell her, Look, your predicament does not determine your destiny. So she encouraged Leah to never leave the house without wearing her sparkling earrings. Look, Leah, I have my sparkling earrings on for you today. I'm so excited Um, because those sparkling earrings would serve as reminders of the light within. And I would really love for you to take over this incredibly powerful story and share it with us in your own words, because I've heard you speak on stage and was just like blown out of the water. I was like, okay, all right, this is something, this is a message um, and a voice that I I really want to highlight you and get you out there to talk to people and share this encouraging message. Thank you. I'm so overjoyed because it's all about the light. So any the hearts that are here and listening, if anything, I'd love to just share like we all have a light with inside of us. Mm -hmm. And when we um, choose to ignite it and let it shine in its most brightest form, lives are transformed. Ceilings, glass ceilings are shattered. Um, Predicaments start to turn into destinies. And I'm a living witness, like you said, that it's proof. And so I always say, if I can, you can. And normally you see me now and I'm in yellow and I'm smiling and everything's so bright. And I love that, but I love to share where my beginnings come from because I wasn't born into that brightness. I was born into what I've categorized as darkness, the most impoverished neighborhood um, that you shared in Philadelphia, born to a single mother. Um, She was born out of poverty. So there was this generational curse situation happening for anyone it doesn't yeah. know what generational curses. It means um, it's perpetual. 
you your your mother was in this her grand her mother was in that you become that and it's just this cycle that continues and continues until yeah someone decides to shine a light that shatters that that cycle and I'm blessed um that that is my journey my the neighborhood that I was born in poverty ridden the streets drugs transactions violence and I give that picture because um, that went from poverty to destitute when my mother broke her leg in several places and she could no longer even mm-hmm. afford to pay the little rent to live in this one bedroom apartment with four children. I, it's, um, wow. I have a sister and a brother. So it's single mother with three children. She mm-hmm. breaks her leg. And now um, the moment I remember so clear uh, was my mother's trying to get her three children home and we get to the door and there's a padlock on the door. And so mm-hmm. all of our belongings, whatever we had was locked into this basement, small apartment. And now there's a mother with three children and no place to take her children. Mm-hmm. That immediately sent us to a homeless shelter. And for anyone, uh, I'm 44, so I pray homeless shelters have changed and look differently, but the first mm-hmm. homeless shelter we landed in was this gym room and it was cots small cots one feet apart fill in the gym room and one mother gets one cot to the entire family so the entire family is balled up on this one cot and there's crying and moaning and sorrow and darkness all around I paint that picture because um the beauty out of that was I remember I'm in about third grade so I'm about age eight and I remember this sorrow and I black out a lot of tragedy but what the first light is, this is a seed of light that was planted. My mother looks down at us, my sister, brother, and I, and she says, your predicament doesn't determine your destiny. Mm-hmm. In the midst of this darkness, and I love sharing that because we are all in some sort of predicament. Yeah. Sometimes, some yeah. good, predicament, some bad, and sometimes yeah. it feels like it's our destiny and it's the only place that we can be. And I love that power of speaking word into your life. Because words can really transform a whole entire um, experience. So uh, that was a seed. I didn't really understand it. I was little. Stayed in the homeless shelter. Um, Years go by. Second life is turned on in my life is I'm coming back from school. Now, I had become my environment. Become negative. Failing every grade. Just everything I saw I was. And I'm coming back from school to the homeless shelter. My mother's standing at the door and I see her face and she's looking really serious. I get right in front of her and she says, I, Leah, do you want to be a leader or a follower? Wow. And I didn't understand that. And she continues to say, because right now you're following everything you see. And guess what, Leah? You're going to become everything you see. Mm-hmm. Or you can choose to lead. You can choose to lead and listen to the inner light inside of you. You can choose to lead your life to your destiny. And I think we miss that opportunity where we're thinking leading is leading others and we think and we're following the world, but there's a whisper inside of us that we can lead to our own destiny. And that's the light that really turned on the power of choice for me because I didn't understand choice. And I feel like we need permission, no matter young or small, big or old. Humans, we like permission. When someone says, oh, you can choose. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. And immediately, I remember the um, next day, so vividly, I went back to school and I asked my teachers, how do I get better grades? How do uh-huh. I How do I see beyond my environment? So whoever's listening, um, there is a power and you do have a choice, even in your, even when you're in a really great place, but your inner whisper says that this, there's something else for you. Yeah. And yeah. that can even be more challenging because the world is probably telling you, why would you want something different? Yeah, that's you right. Have this, right. You're doing well. You have everything that yeah. checks the boxes. Why would you want something different? But because your destiny is calling you. And so yeah. I think there's a power and a freedom of choosing you and choosing your destiny. Wow. 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 And, you know, um, this is so in alignment with the things that we talk about. But 
I just want to pause and acknowledge what you said. I mean, literally, my eyes are tearing up as you're speaking into this, because one of the things that Alex Leanne and I speak about on this is that you can actually create your reality. You, We are gifted as creators of our reality. And we can do this through certain processes of stopping that inner critic and rewiring it, recoding it in our brains so that we are thinking in excellent and praiseworthy ways and tapping into our destiny, tapping into that vision, setting an intention that supersedes our circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, and that be- those beautiful words, you know, that you the the impact that you had in your life with words of life that were spoken over you by your mother at very key moments it mm-hmm. sounds like and then walking forward to the question of do you want to be a leader or a follower because even if we perceive ourselves as followers we lead our lives every day we oh, yeah. get up you know and lead so yeah. Yeah. So then going to your teacher and saying, how do I get better? You, you, it, you made a mind shift right there, uh, a choice shift. You were given the permission, like you said, um, listener, we talk about these things. And again, I want to draw it back to Leah Valencia is the evidence of what's possible despite whatever your trauma yeah. your story, your circumstances are. So yeah. yeah, I can't wait till you share more. Will you share more? Oh, yes. Oh my <laughs> God. I love it. You know why? Because um it's a through line through everything. Words are power. So what are you speaking into your life is so much power. What are you allowing others to speak in your life? And what are you grabbing? What words are you grabbing hold to? Like, that's why I love being on a podcast like this. These, this is words of power. And, and what I what I do every day is those words that are in alignment with my inner whisper. I'm always inner evaluating and not externally evaluating. I, mm-hmm. I allow the external world to be my confirmation of alignment of my destiny. Meaning my whisper said something inside of me. And then now... And like, okay, sounds very awkward because nothing around me says that's true. (laughs) But then now I open my eyes to the world and I start to look for things in confirmation of that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I saw that. Yes, I hear that. Oh, I see, I receive that. And so that keeps me going and pushing. And um, speaking out every dream that you want is so much power. Um, Born in poverty, there was a mindset that you hold things in that you don't tell people your dreams because mm. people will kill your dreams. It, and so it's this hold, it's this, um, it's this closed off mentality. But when I realized like there's this power in speaking words, I realized, whoa, wait, no one can kill your dreams, but you. I, how cool is that? that- if I, 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 I'm, uh, you know, like God is there to lift my dreams up. God will yeah. never my dreams and so the only person that has control over this is me whoa that's beautiful so now I can share it and shout it to the moon because <laughs> even when I hear naysayers oh you're not for me turn the corner oh you're for me I'll be around it more and yeah. so you start speaking it out and the, when you keep pushing out what you want what happens is you start to believe it more Mm-hmm. And I love the word believe. My dear loving heart, Jamie Kern Lima, um, New York Times bestseller, Believe It book, mm-hmm. founder It Cosmetics. She um, wrote this book on it. And But believing is this beautiful word. But it what I love to take further, it's, it's an action word. Yeah. Yeah. And we say we believe something, but when you, if you want to get scientific and you say, well, how do I know if I'm really believing? Fill in the blank. Well, what Mm -hmm. actions have you done toward it? 
Like when I believed my mother, when she told me to listen to my inner light and follow my destiny, I believe that so much. I start doing things. I start asking teachers. I start looking for evidence outside of me. And that just grew and grew. I became the first and only person to go to college, uh, the first and only person in my neighborhood and in my family to get a master's degree. I just start to choose this way of being and decide that in everything I was going to do, I was going to be light, even in the midst of darkness. And people are like, what is light? Light is possibility. This is so beautiful. It's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there is solid science behind this, too, because, you know, we everything on this planet aside from nature, was created from a thought. Mm. There isn't anything yeah. on this planet other than nature yeah. that wasn't created by a thought. Yeah. And stepping into your power, and you activated your brain. So that's your RAS system, your reticular activating system at work. Mm-hmm. From the neuroscience perspective, and you... So- started to see possibility and opportunity everywhere you the 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 doors of your mind opened up and you could see how do i get better grades what do i do to step beyond this darkness that is surrounding me and if if i remember correctly you were in that homeless shelter until you were in 7th grade what what happened at that point? Oh, yeah. And that only that moved us to um, a housing project, which is a homeless shelter, basically just, okay. just transfers to another poverty situation. We actually did get our own small place, um, but it's still this poverty stricken um, public assistant environment. And I stayed there all the way until uh, college. So wow. my entire life is this. And. And it doesn't get easy breaking through darkness. Mm-hmm. So you've got a root in it. When I created one of my collections, Rooted is it, because I realized like the only way to grow is to root deep into these untangible beliefs. Like um, love is a untangible, you can feel it, but there's yeah. no physical it's a way of being. And so one thing is to love yourself beyond anything or anyone could ever love you because then you will let no one harm you. (laughs) You will let no one drive you astray. You will listen to that. Like my mom said, inner whisper, because you know what you need for yourself. And when you love yourself, you hear it and you stand up for yourself. And then when you can love yourself, then you can share that love to others. And then when people feel the love of yourself, portrayed onto them, then you start to be pulled into other places. Like Leah, just come along with me just because of your energy. And so I start to root in these ways of being joy or amongst all, no matter what my situation was, my mother got definitely ill throughout this journey of me Mm. um, seeking my way of being. And um, it was beautiful because she um, got to see my light shining. She got to see Mm -hmm. me leading my life. And right before she left this earth, she um, said, Lee, I see you shining. I see you um, Mm -hmm. following and leading your light. And she gave me these little earrings and she said, and there are going to be some times where you can't find your light because that's what life does. And she said, wear your earrings every day as this visual reminder. Maybe just when you click them on or when you see them in the mirror, yeah. when you can't find your light, it's a visual reminder that your light's always within you. Yeah. And all you have to do is just choose it. It's always there. So you just choose it. And I just choose love that. that concept. So I just start to hand sketch jewelry therapeutically for me. What would these symbols yeah. look like that would trigger me into where I want to be in the world? Wow. I, you know, I am so excited to talk about this, talk about your company now and, you know, your beautiful jewelry line and all that you're doing, shattering glass ceilings. Um, This is so powerful to see that you were able to go within and share more with us. What, what happened on that journey with your mom? Um, 
you know, I would, if, if you would like to share that, I would love for our listener to hear it uh, because it sounds like something that was such an impactful part of your life. And I know losing anybody, I'm widowed. I've lost somebody. I know what it's like. I fought for his life. Um, mm. There was uh, mental illness and, and using an, uh, not good ways to escape and being in it, being in that journey of loving somebody so deeply and things looking pretty dark. Um, yeah, I would love to hear more of this part of your journey about oh, your mom. Thank you. And I, and, and thank you for, let's open up to that. Cause this is actually the first place that I've actually talked about the losing of my mother. I, I mentioned that um, she passed early, but I, I would like to share that because when I share this journey, it sounds easy. You know, it sounds like, yeah. oh, she just started choosing and then life just started to open up and it was this easy thing. Actually, it got harder, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm swimming opposite stream now. The environment I'm in is telling me negative things and showing me negative things. And now I'm trying to seek opposite of that. And then um, life gets even harder because my mother gets sick. Yeah. And so now I'm between trying to attend college and then trying to worry and care about my mother who has fallen deathly ill um, mm -hmm. and balancing the two, going back and forth to school, trying to maintain my grades because my mother told me never to quit anything. You finish it to completion. Then once you complete it, you can decide if you want to continue. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm balancing that. And But what I realized is Trauma and tragedy can either be the demise of you or the actual rock and strength that rises you to layer and levels and levels that you can't even imagine. And mm -hmm. what I knew as I was losing my mother is that um, if her light was going to flicker and maybe leave this earth, then my light needed to shine brighter mm -hmm. because everything that was in her that was meant to be gifted in the world was beautifully poured into me mm. and I could use all of the blessings that she spoke into me through word um to be a physical representation of not only my life but her life as well mm. and so um I took that on as um of course, sorrow, but also as an honor. And so now I had a charge to like really, really live this life. And what <laughs> I thought of is that my mother never lived. She wow. spent maybe 40 some years. I think she died in her early 40s. I kind of black it out. But through poverty, she never truly lived in this world. And so I took that as I'm going to live every day of my life. I'm mm -hmm. going to live every moment of my life. I'm not going to take any moment for granted. I am going to find joy in everything, even in the hardest things I'm going to find. Well, where's the lesson and where's the joy? Yeah. And I'm going to use that to be symbolic in the world for other people to realize that there is living to be had on this world no matter what society has given you and show that if you choose it and then if I can be a symbol to see it, then anybody else can be it. And so that's where my yeah. quest just started. I start to follow my heart. Now I have a master's degree in education because the world said, um, well, well, it was two things. One, I had to get out of my environment. It was the only way out and college was the only way that I could see out of my environment. Yeah. Um, and so I knew that that was going to be another way of exposure. I think exposure, education, and opportunity is the great equalizer. Exposure, oh, education, and opportunity. Uh, but you recognized, how, how did you recognize your need to get out of that environment? Well, see, well, because when my mother said, you know, I hold, when, when words are good to me, I hold on to them and I still do it to this day. You tell me a good word. And it lines up true, but I will create it and grow it so big. So when I realized, like my mother said, listen to my inner whisper, what I what I realized was that there was so much inside of me that I needed to experience. Mm. Yeah. And when she was saying I was following my environment, that was because it was what I saw. Yeah. 
And I'm like, well, I got to see something different. (laughs) Like, it's just obvious. Like, if I'm becoming because of my environment, then if there's other environments of exposure that I can see, then that means I can be something different. And just so my brain just kind of was thinking outside the box of how I could be in something different than what was blessed to me. And that's when I start realizing like, oh, exposure is it because class trips with, to art museums open my brain up in so many big ways. I'm like, whoa, people mm. create like this or whoa, how do you get a job like this? Like these yeah. exposures start to let me in on things that I didn't even know existed. So then I knew like, oh, this is where the goodness is. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, and if you keep learning, you can keep growing. And then when you learn and grow, then opportunities show up just yeah. naturally just through the way you are. And so I was on this quest. I got this master's degree. And then I realized like, um, I'm not living. Mm, So powerful. Yeah. That this is a huge part of the work that I do in helping people to heal their money stories, particularly in their money trauma, because, um, having experienced wealth and meeting so many wealthy people who are miserable, like money doesn't buy happiness. That's not the way it works. And to be able to have that full abundant life that we're meant to have starts with the healing, right? It totally does. And, and it's so interesting to, to think about, this environment that you grew up in and then all of a sudden your exposure to these things. Right. And you're like, mind's blown. Like what this exists and possible. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and feeling, and I must admit it's an interesting world because it's a fish on land now. Right. Yeah. Like do I belong? I don't even know. Like people here in college have fathers and, and mothers and parents have careers and they've taught them how to navigate systems. And, yeah. and I'm just here because I, my godly intuition said, get there, <laughs> but there's no <laughs> guidance. But when you believe, go back to that, when you really believe in that whisper of your destiny, it doesn't matter if you don't feel like you belong. God mm-hmm. says you belong. And so when God says you belong, then you welcome yourself in every room that you step into and you figure it out because you know you belong. And it may be a little harder than everybody else, but yeah, um, hardness never broke many people. It can break you if you decide or it can make you greater and it just gives you a better story. So I did all this, got this a message and I'm like, oh, n- none of, I'm not living. And I saw my mother die. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you know, yeah. the only way I think I can get money is through this master's in education. And I'm like, nothing of that is making me alive. I even start to teach a little bit. And it, it was beautiful to be an educator, but mm. the environment. So I went back into myself and I said, what, where do you, where does your light shine the brightest? Mm. And so anyone that's listening You've got to go into yourself and really ask yourself questions like, where do you shine the brightest? Yeah. And where I shine the brightest. Some people shine the brightest in writing. Some people shine the brightest with math and problem solving. And like, you know, that's just your genius zone. You Somebody gives you a problem and you solve it. Yeah. That's your genius zone. Um, but I realized I shine the brightest through creativity. It's where... Yeah. I- I'm alive. And so I said, okay, well, then I have to set out on that. And so with with a master's degree, I went back to cosmetology school because I decided, well, I'll create, I'll I'll style and create. And that was totally opposite against whatever the world would say, right? Um, Yeah. And I trusted, I trusted and believed that the choice of my light was more impactful than following the society norm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that served me well, but not in the beginning because <laughs> I now I have a master's degree sweeping salon floors <laughs> and and struggling. But um, I realized that I wanted to work for I was working for Mac Cosmetic. Uh, and I like sharing this random journey of mine because everyone thinks that life is linear. 
Yeah. Like, I love what you said earlier about it actually gets harder before. It gets harder and it gets <laughs> confusing and the, the path starts to break off in random places. And you're like, that doesn't look like it's leading to the goal that I set for myself. Yeah. But it is. It is. And every part of your journey is a key that helps unlock the next part of your journey if you mm-hmm. allow it to be. Um, and so this nonlinear way has me now sweeping salon floors. And I love creating and I love styling people's hair and makeup. But I was working in a makeup store um, and I met this lady and she um, has a professional card and I love asking questions. So what has blessed me mm-hmm. and served me well is I love asking questions. Mm-hmm. I love talking to people yeah. and learning that learning concept. And she told me about um, QVC. And I'm like, what? And she says, it's a 24 hour um, live television show where they're selling 24 hours. And I'm like, there's gotta be a salon in there, right? (laughs) And she says, yes. And I knew I didn't want to work in a salon as a salon stylist because I just wanted to create I didn't want to have a book of clients. I wanted to just 24 hour create. That's where my joy would be. And she said, absolutely. So she connected me to someone in the salon, but I hadn't got my license yet. So my application was denied. And I love sharing that because by the time I got my license, it was now um, maybe two years from that connection. And so everyone from that connection was no longer in this QVC email list. So it took me five years to get in a QVC. I wow. love setting it because you got to set your goals and your targets in life. Like once that was put in my spirit, QVC, I knew it was for me. I don't know how I knew it. It made sense to me. 24 hour styling. I could create all the time. This is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So five years went um, away of no's for mm. trying to apply to QVC. Five years of sweeping floors, but every time I got a no, I would learn more hair, learn more creative, learn more. So my tip, my tip in the world is I always say, share your dreams out. Just tell the world. And you're not telling them to ask for help. God is going to align the earth angel that's assigned to your destiny. It's going to happen. That. But when you speak it out in the world, it gives it wings to fly and you get to hear it and believe it more. So if my barometer was, if you smiled at me twice, I would share my dream with you. (laughs) I love that. I love that so much. So I would smile at me twice. So I'm I'm bartending to support myself while sweeping floors. And um, as this one person comes up, his name was Fred. And he smiled twice. And I said, I want to work for QVC. <laughs> and that was so random. And he's like, oh, okay. Really random. And he said, oh, I work for Comcast. That's interesting. My friend works for QVC, Stephanie Humphrey. <laughs> and let me see. What I, I always share this is because everyone wants to know the how. Yeah. How mm-hmm. am I going to get there? Yeah. And that's beautiful. And God's going to open that up door by door, millimeter by millimeter. But the most important thing that we control is the how in you. Mm, yeah. How am I being in the world? Yeah. Is everything that has allowed me to shatter glass ceilings. Yeah. It's not my talent. It's not anything. It's my my specific commitment to being kind to being love, to being light, to smiling at everyone that I see, to welcoming people in like a comforted, warm hug. Yes. We'll receive that. And then that changes trajectory. So this gentleman um, says, let me get your contact information. He takes my information. The next day, Stephanie Humphrey had never met me a day in my life. But because of the warmness that I had radiated to this gentleman named Fred, he transferred that energy to her and said, this person has such a good energy. Is there any way you could help her? Wow. Stephanie Humphrey, through a text message, says, my friend tells me about your energy. Here's the contact person of QVC, their email address, and you can use me as a reference. Wow. Wow. So you you were totally bringing in everything that 
you were in alignment with right there with your energy. And of course, you know, there's a lot out there right now on the law of attraction. We approach things from a neuroscience perspective. There's the quantum field, there's epigenetics, all of these things, right? And really it all bottom line comes down to the thing, the, the belief systems that we have, you were believing and you were feeling it and expressing it in action, right? Yeah. With a, an intention of your vision and declaring it, which is so incredible and beautiful. Listener, are you drinking in these beautiful, warm, nuggets, uh, gold nuggets. I say this a lot. And, you know, the light here for you to know that it isn't about the how the brain always goes to the strategy. But yes. it's, it's, it's really about knowing who you are and knowing what is possible. That belief factor is so huge. And it literally is starting the process of creating with a thought with creating with the belief. And people remember the way that we make them feel. When I met Damn. Leah Valencia in person, you know, this is one of the reasons that we're here together now. I would, I was like, how do I connect with her and get with her? Because I want to be in the presence of this energy. But she gave me a huge warm hug and made me feel like the most loved person on the planet. And I was like, yes, more. <laughs> I, I, and we all have it inside of us, you know, um, yeah. it's not highlighted as much in the world because it's like, be professional, be this way, be yeah. that. But I'm telling you, if you be more love, <laughs> it will yeah. bring so much more. And you're not being loved to get love, but it's just the natural science of it all. When you are love, you attract love. And that just took me, um, that got me into QVC. I had been sweeping five years, so now my skills were ready. <laughs> and I got I got the interview through beautiful Stephanie Humphrey's connection. I got the yes in the interview, and that opened my light to a world of QVC where dreams happen and uh, people make dreams come true. The host and dreamers that are business entrepreneurs are dreaming these big dreams and putting the action in to actually bring them to life. And I'm styling these people 24 hours a day. Yeah. Two beautiful hearts. Now there are many earth angels that have blessed me. That's a whole podcast for me to list them. But <laughs> I um, list uh, Jamie Kern Lima, founder of It Cosmetics. Her new book is coming out worthy. It's going to be so good. Yeah. Um, and Vicky Sai, founder of Tatcha Skincare, the mm. huge beauty brands now. But they saw my light in the salon and they just say, come along with me. And mm. they um, allowed me to sit into rooms of business rooms that I never knew existed. Wow. And they wow. showed me a whole nother side of the world of what was possible. That's that exposure thing. You get to yeah. see it, to be it. And I start to realize every time I was styling people, um, the last thing that they would say before they would go to a big opportunity was what bracelet am I going to put on? What necklace am I going to, what earrings? It was their seal of confidence and light before they walked onto something big. And I realized I have been hand sketching these symbolic wearable pieces for, since my mother had inspired me that, and my whole life was being light in the midst of everything. And the reason why people were bringing me along was because of my light. And so I knew um, through Jamie and Vicky that if you have intention specific love and intention and you pour it into something tangible it becomes life-changing in the receiver's hands wow and so I realized that um I needed to pour all of my love and light that my life's journey had been taking me on into these pieces that I was hand sketching to bring them out to the world um mm -hmm. so Valencia means bravery and courage and key is to unlock and so every time you are um, wearing or having a piece of Valencia key. It's wearable symbols that say, unlock your joy, unlock your light. All things are possible. When yeah. you 
all things are possible. And you, you've you uh, gone on to um, be in Oprah Magazine, yes. CBS, yes. done quite a lot of media, yes. and your pieces are beautiful. What do your earrings say right oh, now? Oh, thank you. Oh, so everything has um, meaning, and they say it's possible. And I engrave it on one side because sometimes you need that message whispered to you. You need to be reminded mm-hmm. to yourself, it's possible, keep going. And then sometimes you need to be a light in the world to others, that you are a symbolic representation, that yes, whatever you feel and dream is possible for you. Yes, I'm so excited. I, I'll i tell you, I want your recommendation because um, I got to see her jewelry display in person. It was beautiful. And I was like, Okay, I want it all. So I'm going to talk to Leah and I want her recommendation on what would really be be amazing yeah. for me because these are beautiful statement pieces. They're inspiration, they're motivation, they're encouragement. They are a part of light and love in the world and just surrounding ourselves with that kind of energy, right? And being in the rooms. It's so lovely to hear about the rooms that open up with you because I think it was Jim Rohn that said, we are the five people that we hang out with the most. And I I want to pause for you listener and just remind you that you can be putting yourself in the rooms by listening to podcasts, by, you know, attending summits and conferences. There are virtual ways that you can put yourself in the room if you're not able to physically be in a room and physical ways and, and start with that belief, put it out there and, you know, watch who gathers around you. I've seen this in my own life and it's incredible. It's an incredible experience. It's like, wow. And so this has happened right now with you, Leah, and your story and your story is encouraging for all of us, for me in particular, because Um, you know, we all do have our traumas, but I've heard the message. I've received the message from some of the criticism. When we start to put ourselves out there, we start to get criticism that, oh, you know, um, you could never understand my journey Mm -hmm. and you're making that journey plain Mm -hmm. and you're making it this is what I walked through. This is what I had to experience. And I get to do that with my own story. And it is a matter of not being hidden, being able to say, this is what I went through and why I went through it. It has purpose. It has meaning. So um, I I love when you get to, when you get to fully walk in your journey and like, and share it and yeah. It inspires others that they have a journey. No one's journey is the same, but one thing as humans, we all live a journey. Like yeah. we all have a journey and it's so impactful to see your journey, my journey, someone else's journey so that we know that we're not alone in this world. Yeah. And even if the world says your journey is pretty, you have journeys inside of there that is your thing that you have decided you can overcome or that you can conquer. And I think it's just so beautiful. That's what Valencia Key is about. It's about our journey. And I feel like when you see so many people, I think my first recommendation is um, one of the bracelets. Bracelets are- I love bracelets, yeah. Introduction to um, anything. You can wear it every day, but they have different words. And because I root into words- the words are powerful for me and um, the bracelets have either joy, love, peace, or believe. And yeah. I feel like those are power words that when you root into mm-hmm. any one of them, if you just pick peace, peace is one of my most underrated word. And I'm like, but if you ha- if you hold true to your peace, if you root into saying that I am going to keep my peace, then you're always checking in with your life. Like what is taking my peace? Then how do I alter it back? Um, mm-hmm. How can I be peace? Yeah. How can, how can I walk in a room and be some peace for someone who needs mm-hmm. it in the midst of their storm? 
Because mm-hmm. sometimes people need to hold on to peace while they're in a storm so it can bring them to center. And then how do you remove things that aren't? And then when you are peace, then you can have joy. Mm-hmm. Then you can be love. Then your brain is clear enough so that you can truly believe. Like, so yeah. these words are so powerful that if you just simply can wear one or two, I mean, I stack my life up <laughs> on your <laughs> wrist because um, we use our hands so often. You get to see them throughout your day. And when yeah. life is kind of throwing you off your even barometer, you're like, oh, come back to love, Leah. Oh, show, receive some peace here. And uh, I think that's beautiful. I think it's so wonderful when we collectively, um, yeah. as, as life forces, like you say, um, go on this journey together, mm-hmm. it makes it more possible. It does. And also, I was thinking about the rooms when mm-hmm. that's the call about how do I get in the rooms? Because everyone wants to know. One of my most impactful ways is volunteering. So like, yeah. what do you love? What do you love to do? What? Who do you want to be around? And then find some events and activities that are doing that or in line with that and just volunteer in those spaces. You know, there's no commitment for you to be great, first of all. When you volunteer, you don't have to be great at it. <laughs> you show you giving your time is the blessing. So you can learn and then you start to be around like-minded people. Yeah. Right. And then that just starts to expose you, you know, if you can't afford the events and anything like that, just find some volunteer spaces. And that's a beautiful way to start. That's a great people. tip. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What, what are you focused on now with your business? Where are you going? I can't wait to hear about that and to share that with us. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm always going and doing something. Like I'm like, ooh, what's next? Uh, one is I, I'm really just allowing myself to be in places where I'm able to speak to audiences and companies and groups to really inspire this concept of light. Because we can change the world when we become that. One, one light at a time, we can start mm-hmm. turning on other lights. Um, I'm also working, my love project is um, working. My father was from Africa and he um, wasn't the best father because whatever his his story was, but he uh, got to America uh, by a lottery of them taking uh, children from villages through a, um, a missionary project. And he was, uh, they tested the children in the village and the top the highest score, which is so sad, children in the village got to be removed and be educated. Wow. And um, while I was in this homeless shelter, my father, who didn't, wasn't taught how to be a father, um, he would say, whenever he would show up, he would say, this is not poverty. Where I'm from is where you really see destitute poverty. And I'm one in a million to make it out of the village. And my heart used to bleed even when I was a child and think like, oh my God, it's something worse than where I live. And I will always think like one day I'm going to make a difference in Africa. And so two years ago, I got to go to Africa, which was a blessing. And I got to see what he was saying. And it is it is different. And it is not like anything that we experience in America. And so I was trying to figure out how can I how can I make opportunity? Because I know opportunity is a great equalizer. So and but how do I do it where people wherever where you are in your joy zone, like where I like to be? And I saw this beading work, this hand bead, it's the cultural thing, tradition. And so I was like, oh, if I design handbags and then I work with the women in the villages and just use and hire them, give them income and opportunity to create these pieces. Um, then I can help be income in their life and help them educate their children and feed their families. Wow. So that's my mission project. And I promise them that I keep bringing orders in. And I'm like, okay, God, um, I pr- I can stand up to this promise. <laughs> so yeah. that's my mission. Um, when you go on my website, if you just put your email in, I have new a new order coming in and they're hand beaded. They're so beautiful. Beautiful, but not only beautiful, the mission is even more beautiful because you're helping um, lives have opportunity. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited about this. And um, 
that is spreading the light, right? That is um, cherishing and supporting women around yeah. the world too, and very powerful. And how does it change their lives? Will you just touch on that real quickly? I know we've gone a little long, but oh yes, yeah. I, I love so it. So interesting. I love it. It's so good. Well, see, here's here's the challenge. Well, one is um, when you are born in some area like a village of Ghana. Um, the education opportunity is very minimal because you have to pay for schooling. So 90% of the time, you may not have been able to be educated. And then there's a class system. But if you were born in poverty, then the class system keeps you in poverty. So what happens is in the village, there's very few work. There's, I mean, the only way that you're really supporting yourself is finding a trade or like these women go into the market, they hand bead things and then they go to these markets and they have all their wares out and they pray that one person comes to the market to buy something that they've been working yeah. on for days. Yeah. Or what is really risky is they walk up and down the middle of these really busy, dangerous streets with their wares on their head. Yeah trying to hope that people in cars will buy from them. So they're risking their lives and risking everything to try to get an opportunity to sell where if we can bring income to them and we can bring um, career opportunities, then they can put food on their table. Mm -hmm. Then they can, then they now, they now can pay for their child that they didn't have the opportunity to go to school. They mm-hmm. can now afford to pay for their child to go to school. And it's actually changing generations. Some homes are built um, with scrap metals and things that they can find. So when the rain comes and there's rain season, the rain is pouring through the huts. Yeah. The structure they can afford to get pieces to cover their roofs it's these little things that we don't even that we take for granted yeah water to drink yeah water to drink like I went yeah. I was in one place and I'm um, I asked for a restroom and they said oh we have to walk almost a mile wow if you want to get to a regular restroom like this income is not changing lives like what we think like getting a job it's like literally improving quality of living yeah and but what the beauty is I, you hear all that but all every heart is in joy and in gratitude and in with the little that is given it's so much love around wow. you know for the appreciation mm-hmm. of what you really when you have little you get to appreciate a lot and um yeah. It's just so wonderful when we can stand up to keep giving orders, then that appreciation to change their entire generations is just going to, um, it's a blessing, not just to one person, but to generations to come. Yeah. And generosity creates wealth. It's, <laughs> you can't outgive uh, God. You can't. So. You can't. And when we're given in a, like everything about Valencia Key is from, I even go back here when we talk about local, I go back to homeless shelters and I work with homeless shelters. It started with just women. And then now my workshops have men and women in it, which I love because this message is not gender specific and that just makes my heart happy. But like, how do we take our predicament where we are and then we create a light path to go to our destiny? So I go back to these homeless shelters and work with hearts that are in the situations that I was raised in to help them unlock because if I did it they can it's yeah. just someone just needs to to give you the exposure that I was blessed to figure out and so it is yeah. my duty to take these blessings back to unlock hearts wow well I I just want to thank you so much for being here I want to thank you for sharing your story And listener, we will have the links to her website in the show notes, as well as her bio. So you can go back and participate in her beautiful inspirational jewelry line and in the generosity of raising women's lives around the world. Um, This is powerful and 
I love your message of light and that we can be light. We are light. We are light. We are light. We are light. We we can express the light that we are. Yes. And um, you know, the I'm so thankful that you're sending the that you're on stages and that you're giving this message. And so I'm very honored to have you here. And uh, oh, wow, listener. Wow. All right. You know, I've got chills. I'm blown away. And I know you are too. So thank, thank you, you so it's a much. Joy. Thank you all for letting me into your heart. I'm so grateful. Oh. Okay. I'll see you next week. I can't wait. And sending you the most amazing week of being unleashed and unstoppable. Ciao for now. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.